Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today, we are opening up what I can't help but think of as the Hunky Boy Predator. And if you don't get that reference, then you need to watch the incredible movie Psycho Goreman. Please go watch it right now, then come back and watch my review of Hunky Boy Predator, even though this is actually the Assassin Predator deluxe action figure from NECA, from the movie The Predator, which I was a fan of. I thought it was an awesome throwback to 80s action flicks, but uh, not everybody li liked it like I did. But it's also, it's a movie that takes place in Georgia at Halloween, so that had that going for it too. But anyway, this is, regardless of what you think of the movie, there were some awesome Predator, predator designs, and as you can see, this is a big, big Predator. Which is why it's a deluxe action figure. Box looks great. Uh, it, it's got a captivating image that will draw your eye to the shelf upon which it sits. Because obviously this guy is going after one of your standard issue predators. Got the spine hanging out. Very, very cool. Got the uh, laser sight insignia at the top or logo at the top. Credits on the bottom of the box. On the back of the box, you've got product shots. And it, I think it's important that they did this comparison here because, one, it shows you the real difference in size, and, two, it means I don't have to go and get one of the Predators off of my shelf to actually put in front of the camera here so you can see just how big Hunky Boy is. Uh, this is the Predator, Assassin Predator. Predators have been genetically evolving themselves to be stronger, smarter, and more lethal than ever before. No Oxford comma there. Come on, NECA. When a young boy accidentally, accidentally activates a mysterious alien device and becomes the target of these enhanced predators, only his father and the most unlikely ragtag band of crazy ex-military agents can save him and the human race from obli obliteration. I was going to say oblivion. I really wanted to say oblivion, even though obliteration is a better word there. We should also have uh, another hyphen here. Come on, NECA. Who, who did the copy on this? Uh, packaging, Chris Longo. I'm going to have to assume he did the copy as well. Chris Longo, get on your Oxford commas and your hyphenation, buddy. Uh, I'm just kidding. You did a great job. Everything looks beautiful. So let's open up the panel that to me is such an important aspect of NECA's mass market retail presence because you see this sitting on the shelf. And I mean, the first thing you notice is how massive it is. It's, uh, you know, real estate wise, a standard predator box, probably here, here. Uh, so you can see this is a, th a third, again, as big as your standard Predator release. But then when you open up, you see, oh my gosh. And, and now I hope you also understand why I'm calling him Hunky Boy Predator, because this guy is showing some skin, my friends. Uh, but massive figure. Again, standard Predator probably comes up to about here on this fella. Uh, just really cool product shot over there. But this is... It's funny because... There are less bells and whistles with this figure than there are with other Predator figures, but just that size is what made me say, man, I, I got to get this. This has to be on my shelf. So let's take our trusty 1964 box cutter, slice right through that circular adhesive piece that keeps the box closed up and safe from prying mass market retail hands. We'll get our figure out but first we'll take our backdrop out and see what we've got here uh just a cool shot of the city which actually is that a little weird i don't remember there being a ton of city in the predator uh and is this atlanta i don't know and there he is my gosh this thing is so heavy you guys it's ridiculous uh all right let's pull the accessories out first uh additional head and we've got lots of little bits and pieces, uh, this thing, and then also this thing, and then that thing there. And then finally, a couple of extra hands. It's almost a relief. Is he really not secured in here with anything? Wow, that is wild that a figure this large uh, doesn't have any... Well, look, and he looks like he's supposed to. Because there's spots in here for your standard ties to go through the plastic. But, I mean, this hadn't 
I'm going to take a look. This, this is, if you guys have been watching, uh, I recently opened up a G.I. Joe item that I had to sort of figure out why it seemed like it might have been opened before. But this, I mean, this hasn't been opened. This is This was fresh out of the case, uh, which you can see from the tissue paper stuck to the J-hook. Uh, again, all of these boxes were in kind of rough shape. Uh, I picked the best, even though I don't care, which honestly, I probably should have picked the worst box since I knew I was going to open it, but none of them were good. So it's not like a mint in box collector was going to be like, Oh, this is, this one's good enough for me. They all kind of looked like garbage. Uh, so yeah, this, this hadn't been opened before. So it's not like he's been removed. They just forgot to put in his securing straps. My gosh, look at this big boy. Look at that face. You are one ugly motor scooter. Absolutely fantastic. Look at those eyes, man. Painted detail. I mean, look, at this point in the game, we all know what NECA does. We all know what they're capable of. Uh, you know, we know that sculpt and paint are their strong suits, and we know that sturdiness is maybe one of their shortcomings which is why I'm not going to go too crazy trying to move any of these joints. Oh, look at this, though. We've got a fantastic upper abdominal joint. Pretty decent range right there. Uh, moves around nicely. We've got a uh, rocker waist, so we don't have an ugly cut joint at the waist. Really nice. Uh, the shoulders, I'm kind of curious to see how these are going to work because we've got a very soft plastic piece here that's clearly intended to cover up the disc up here. But I don't know quite how that's supposed to bend. Okay, it looks like this piece, you can see right here, I'm going to try and show you. This piece lifts up so that when you move the arm, it goes over the top part of the shoulder right there. So you get that nice, you can see the bottom of the disc here. Uh, so you get that movement there. But when the arm is down, that just settles back into place. So that's fine. That's good engineering right there. I like that. Uh, and hopefully these softer plastic pieces are secured pretty well to those shoulders. I guess the shoulder joints are moving really nicely. So they've done a nice job here. I like it. Uh, double jointed elbows. We've got a swivel at the top of the armor here. And it looks like our double jointed elbows will move pretty nicely. At least the bottom part will. I, I've made this observation about NECA. It seems like one side of the joint always moves just fine. And the other side needs a little encouragement. But that's nice. Looks good. Uh, let's take a look at these armor pieces here. My, <laughs> my arms are getting tired from holding this guy up. He's so heavy. Uh, or perhaps just because I'm such a weenie. Uh, so really great detail there. Lots of painted sculpted detail. And you can see the slots where that blade goes. And I'll tell you, it's nice not having fixed blades. Oh my gosh, his foot fell off. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I'm sure it'll plug right back in. Yeah, there we... Oh man, that tab just broke. You guys, what a running theme uh, we've got here of me having NECA toys break on me live. Look at that. That tab just broke right off when I tried to push it back in. Uh, so this one will be going back to the store, and I'll see if I can get another one. Uh, there, and there you go. That's what I was talking about, is NECA has some challenges with the sturdiness and durab durability of their toys because that foot just fell right off uh, with no prompting, which also makes me wonder. But, but like I said, this was case fresh. You know, it seems like somebody returned it, but this was a full... Uh, they have these um, sort of cut boxes that all these sit in. There were four of them. They were all there. Oh, nice ratcheting joint in the hip. Very nice. And then we've got the uh, double-jointed knee. Not going to try and move that top one. Uh, but yeah, that foot just fell right off. You guys saw it happen. Uh, and then at the ankle, we've got a nice pivot. And I would imagine a swivel. Yeah, a little bit of a swivel at the knee and the ankle. And then what should be a nice foot joint there, but uh, turns out not to be. So there you go. And then the other side, you've got uh, the forearm armor. And looks to me like we've got a little blaster piece that plugs in right here. 
little articulation moves up and down uh, two different spots. Very, very cool. I like that. It might actually go the other way. Let's see here. Uh, you can see that that's sculpted a specific pattern on there. So I wonder if maybe it plugs in that way. Yeah, I think that looks a little better, don't you? Uh, and then on the other side here, we have his blade. And what I was going to say before I noticed his freaking foot fell off is that blade plugs right into the arm there. But it's nice opening up one of these Predator figures and not having the fixed blades in the way of trying to pose the figure and get it to move around and stuff. Uh, I like that. And then we can swap the hand out as well, perhaps. Although really, these alternate hands are just fists. Uh, I'm not really that interested in a closed fist. I like the open claw that they've got here more. So uh, after I return this guy and get another one, whoops, sorry, uh, this this is how I'll be posing him with the, the open claw hands. Uh, he's got a little loincloth on. Uh, and as you can see, he is a very hunky boy. Looks pretty awesome, aside from his broken foot. Uh, great sculpting and detail. You can see all of the uh, the sort of reptilian textures on his skin here. All of the painted uh, skin patterns that we know the Predators have. Just looks really amazing. And just the size of this guy. I mean, look how huge this beast is. Really awesome, imposing... Uh, figure in every sense of the word uh, let's see how easy it is since this one's going back anyway let's pop this head off okay so that is on a peg rather than a ball joint which is what i would have assumed uh, but it looks like we've got a pretty decent peg here so we're going to put in this angry screaming head that's going to be difficult to get on because he's got little spiky protuberances all over the top of his head so, I don't know how well this is going to work for me. I might end up injuring myself more than this figure has been injured. I Yeah, I'm going to heat that when I change this, because I believe this is the face I'm going to want on mine. Uh, I'm going to heat this head up before I try and put it on the peg. But, really awesome! I like this guy. He's a high price tag for... A NECA Predator figure. We're looking at 50 bucks for this guy. But to me, the size and the just the knowledge that you've got this gigantic Predator sitting on your shelf uh, makes it worth it. So, awesome figure. And I'll keep you guys up. Well, I'm, I'll probably... For, oh, wait. I forgot whatever this little tiny piece is right here. I wonder if it plugs in. To cover up the spot where the blaster goes if you don't have the blaster out. Uh, who knows? I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments. But uh, there's that little extra piece. But there you go. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, please check out your Predator's feet when you pull them out of the box. And make sure that they are attached. But other than that, uh, please like, subscribe, share, keep watching, keep an eye out for more Needless Unboxings.